Okay, looks like we're rolling. Okay, so good. Uh, greetings, greetings, greetings. Uh, this is you, Aquarius, over here. This is Terra Illumination, and this is your general report, kind of like a broad spectrum spiritual thing for what we call July 2018. Now, if you probably figured it out, this is kind of an epic month for you, Aquarius, because we're slap bang in the middle of Aquarius Leo eclipses. All right, it's that season. It's going to be over soon. Uh, 2019, everything shifts into the Cancer Capricorn eclipse axes, and the North Low <laughs> North Node changes into uh, Cancer at that time. But for the time being. You're right. You're right in the thick of it. It's like you might be feeling like you're getting knocked around and banged around like a pinball or like a surfer who lost, lost his board while big wave surfing. Let's have a look. Key dates. Mark your calendar. Coming straight out of the end of June, June 27th, we have the Cancer Capricorn eclipse. Uh, uh, sorry, full moon. Cancer Capricorn full moon. OK, and that's where the, that's where the action is going to be next year, 2019. But this sets you up for a two-week period for the first two weeks of July to get you to the new moon eclipse over here, July 12th, Cancer Sun, Cancer Moon. And then the next two weeks later, you've got the full moon on July 27th. Uh oh oh no, the Leo Aquarius axis again, kerblam, radical shifts upheaval. So at least you've got this marked in your calendar, okay? It's going to be the Leo sun with the Aquarius moon, full on opposition, okay? Right in your face. And then heading into August, August 11th, the big new moon in Leo eclipse. Oh no, oh, oh Aquarius, you can handle it, don't worry. You're hanging out with Terra Illumination, and there's lots of good people here you can turn to, so don't worry, you'll be fine. Let's look at the Astro Doodle. Okay, hold on, it's over here somewhere. Here you go. All right, this one's for you, Aquarius. This is just super simplified. I'm just marking the dates again. Think of this as a clock, tickety, 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 talk. Uh, June 27th, there is the Cancer Capricorn full moon on the 6th and 12th house axis. Spirituality, house of self undoing, house of rest and healing. And then how does that turn into practical expressions, okay? Uh, new lifestyles over here. So the, for the first two weeks of July, you're going to go tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, all the way over here till you reach July the 12th. Okay, there you go. June 27th, full moon axis thing here. Tick tock, two weeks, July 12th, the eclipse, the Cancer new moon eclipse. This is a precursor of 2019. So be aware, be alert, Aquarius. Eclipses uh, knock things out. And open the door to the new, and it's a it's a it's a irreversible. Uh, it's like a one-way valve. It's an evolutionary trigger. So there's no going back, and you already know that, Aquarius. So there you go. New changes in your health and practices, lifestyle changes, perhaps whatever that might be. And then two weeks later, you might have a better understanding what that means because it looks like it's likely to be experienced in your most fundamental relationships. Look at it right here, the first and seventh house axis. You've got, here we are, July 27th, the Aquarius moon, uh, right opposite the Leo sun, okay? So it's right in your face, relationship dynamics, right in your face, like, oh my gosh, what am I doing wrong? What have I done wrong? How have I self-sabotaged? Uh, in terms of love and relationships, how do I need to become more like more authentic and true um, and almost like abandoning the Aquarian model? I know it sounds absurd, but sometimes if you take it too far, it's very, very um, not. So, I'm not saying self-destructive, but uh, it can lead to self undoing, to total selflessness where the Aquarians can be totally lost uh, uh, in the mission and the cause of the greater humanity. What use is that to you? What use are you to humanity if you're completely lost in a mission? <laughs> Duh. So anyway, I'm just saying, please pay attention. Here are the key dates, June 27th, July the 12th, July 27th. And we'll get to this one, August 11th, about the eclipse over here next month, okay? So just, 
anyway, it's going to be quite a, quite a radical month for you, Aquarius. I'm just giving you a heads up. You know the drill here. Watch for your sun, moon, and rising. Reinterpret to suit yourselves. Make it your own story. We're going to use Terra Illumination Beaching Heart Spread here. It's on the understanding that you might be the most highly evolved so-and-so uh, from your neck upwards. But what use is that if your heart is starving? Okay? The heart, I will we'll show you. Let's just get on with it, okay? Cards were well shuffled in advance. No jumpers, no pliers, no oracles, no reversals. This is stripped down, bare bones tarot, okay? And it's all about bringing the healing power of love into your life from up above, okay? That's the theme of tarot illumination. It's all about love and healing, okay? So here we go. Okay, we're good. We're good. Bring your angels in. Bring your spirit guides, however you think of them. They are there but they typically like to be invited, all right? So I'm just suggesting we do that here at Terra Illumination. And so it's a team effort over here. So it works better when you have your team with you too, all right? Here we go. This is core heart energy. The heart needs what it needs, wants what it wants, knows what it needs and wants, and it's up to you, Aquarius, to listen. The heart prays and hopes all the time that you are listening. The heart pumps out all the nutrients that you need all day, every day till you drop and it removes all the waste and sends it out to the waste systems until you drop. So please pay attention. The more out of alignment you are in your egoic self with the heart center, the more likely you are to suffer pain and disorientation at some point, okay? Self undoing. So it really helps. It behoves us to get as closely aligned with heart energy as possible. What are you bringing in with you, Aquarius? You might be still shaking and rattled a roll from the eclipses early in 2018, okay? Because they were tumultuous for a lot of people, radically shifting, shaking things around, you know, the precursors. And now we have Mars in Aquarius, okay? Talk about trouble, troublemaker Mars in Aquarius. The shadow aspect, of you know, Mars in Aquarius is the rebellious uh, freedom fighter who feels um, uh, disrespected. And that's the worst thing you could possibly do to Mars in Aquarius uh, because Mars wants, Mars in Aquarius wants equality. As far as I know, Mars is exalted in Aquarius. So when it's behaving effectively, Mars in Aquarius is fantastic for the planet. So anyway, it just it might have been a lot of jolts over the last few months with the eclipses for the Leo Aquarius crowd. Okay, so what about the ever-present now? This is where uh, we own our power. So, you know, Aquarians, you can be very futuristic uh, and maybe forget about the past. Let's focus on the future, man. Like, how's this going to work for mankind on all that? Save the planet, yay, and all that. So uh, you, could, but then you end up neglecting the now. It's still very important, even for Aquarians, to stay present here in the now, because this is where your power lies. And you don't have to dwell on the past or anticipate a future. Just be present. This is where the power is. The future will take care of itself once you make healthy, loving, healing decisions here in the now. How does that look over here? This is the healing power of your decisions as they can be activated in the now. So how do you make that happen effectively so this actually works? Love thyself. It's a formula here at Terra Illumination. Love thyself. You, Aquarius, love thyself. The heart needs what it needs and wants what it wants. Love thyself. That's what's best for the planet. That makes you the most effective Aquarian you can be. So let's do that. Let's make it happen. How do we do that? Over here. Let's look. So let's say we kind of understand like, wow, Terra Illumination, that sounds like a formula. Well, it is kind of a formula, so, and it generates consequences. If you don't like to be in the now, if you're constantly outsourcing your own presence to and your own destiny, your own future, your own decision-making to other entities, other bodies, other institutions, obligations, careers, missions, relationships that's outside of you, then you're throwing your power away, okay? What's the point? I mean, why are you here otherwise? So over here, what happens if we mess up? What if you're constantly um, like immersed in the so-called future or trying to repair some kind of 
past that doesn't exist anymore. It's just shadows. It's just legacies. It's just pain and suffering or whatever, or history or glory or whatever. But it's already gone. The clock is always ticking. The clock, the clocks, clocks are always, always ticking. It never stops. Evolution never stops. And with these eclipses, it's a really serious, like critical calendar moment. There's a lot of shakeups going on. So if you mess up, what does that look like? If you mess up on your decisions and you neglect, you neglect to love thyself, what does that look like? What does it look like when you do get in the groove here? You stay conscious, present now. Forget the turmoil and the radical upheavals of the eclipses. Just stay present and you love thyself effectively. What does that look like? Over here, prospects and momentum to get you into the next beat of the heart. There is the heart. I hope you can see that shape there. And this is the very, very core. Do -do, do -do, do -do, do -do. You've seen those slow motion heart videos. Do -do, do -do. Pumping nutrients out, pumping wastes away. Okay? It's all for you. Okay, let's have a look. Circumstantial energy, call it the weather. Let's make the best of it. And you have the Eight of Pentacles. My feeling is that you've learned a lot of very tough lessons over the last, uh, let's see, February, March, April, May, June, July. The last six months. Very, very tough lessons. And it, you've turned it into a work, into a practice where if you got really battered around, early on the other eclipse season, early in the year, maybe that was a serious wake-up call, like, I need to get my act together. It's a lot of work. Yes, it is a lot of work, but it is worth it. It's an investment for the future, and you all you have to do is get through to the end of 2018, actually, to the middle of September, and you're going to be fine. You're going to be free and clear for another 19 years, so it's totally worth it. My feeling here is circumstantial energy is indicating to you that whether you are still suffering in deep pain or not, it doesn't matter. You've done very, very well, and you still have to, a lot of work to do, and it's worth it, okay? It is worth it, okay? So the journey is not over. The eclipse seasons are not over. You're in the thick of it right now, okay? So what about the heart core center here? Okay. You've got the King of Cups. Oh, I'm happy to see this because, you know, in some ways, a lot of people think they have this stereotype. Aquarians can be so cool and detached and cerebral. Like, oh, uh, like, you know, what about happy, gooey, mushy romance? What about all the Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio type energies? All the, uh, the, the earthy, earthy, tangible, let's hang out together in physical life and type of energies. All the, all that stuff where you're up in the clouds, not in the clouds, but up in the science labs, up in the, the high, high frequency areas, trying to figure out what works best for life and for people. But the heart needs love. The heart is saying, it's time to attain mastery at this level, dear Aquarius. Like, hello, hello, hello. I am this magnificent thing at the very core and center of you. Are you aware of this? Hello, hello. Wake up. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, what were you saying? I'm saying I am here. I am here. Uh, I am the most important organ in your body. And it's time to get centered here. It's a time to attain mastery so that I am not living at the mercy of your Aquarian missions. Okay. So, Let's with the King of Cups. My feeling is that the heart knows this already, and you probably already know it already, Aquarius. But now it's time to take action, it's time to live up to what the heart needs and wants. It's time to make like the, the whole these theoretical scientific concepts of things like feelings and emotions and heart energy because it has an aura. This energy here has a huge, powerful aura, and you might be able to measure it very scientifically, Aquarius, with some mind-boggling machine and space-age camera, but none of that can happen unless this is healthy. An, like For you, Aquarius, a very healthy aura would be like a dazzling disco ball. You know, every color of the rainbow just sparkling outwards, radiating out from you. But that can't happen unless you love thyself first and put that at the core priority take charge of any emotional turbulence
things that you might not want to deal with the, deal with and bring it into order and make love the priority don't you know it doesn't have to be saving the world loving loving thyself is the priority it's the number one priority what are you bringing in with you okay well let's just say it's been tough it's been a really 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 tough juggling match because it's not it's almost like no i'm not trying to hurt your feelings here no harm intended but uh, like the aquarian brain isn't formatted this way the aquarian brain is like like a massive computer and it's almost like what is all this mushy stuff going on in terms of like psychic impressions or love and romance um, when it can all be distilled down into scientific equations oh dear oh dear oh dear dear oh dear dear people do you see what i like what i do you see what i have to put up with as an aquarian can you see what i have to deal with it's either this or that i've got to take care of this or that and yeah you're doing a good job here you're balancing things out against the emotional turbulence and turmoil because realistically honestly these kind of eclipses um even though you might be in denial dear aquarius these eclipses can be radically emotionally very disturbing very upsetting where you can get seriously derailed at the heart level especially in the context of relationships these eclipses are naturally uh, you know geared around the polarity of sun and moon masculine feminine uh, in which most of our experience and understanding of these eclipses would occur so what's happening in your personal life this is not a personal uh, love and relationship reading but the things that your heart needs to know and wants to know could be happening in your deepest most intimate personal life as opposed to your career or your mission or your call to save the world and all those kinds of good things for Aquarius but you're doing it you're handling it you're handling and what I'm sensing is that it doesn't come naturally to you in that way it's not like you're like a triple Scorpio or a double cancer double Pisces thingy you're an Aquarius okay so you have to deal with these in a very kind of methodical manner, realistic, down-to-earth manner, uh, almost like in a Saturnian type of way, and get on with it and keep the keep up the good work. Keep up all the diligence and vigilance that you've put in so far. Yes, it is tough, but you're doing it. Well done. Okay, what about the now? Okay, you see? You might have done so much already. Look at all these pentacles here for you. Love is as love does. I'm thinking about evidence of love, okay? So we might be on a crusade here, a mission to prove that love is as love does. In other words, think of a definition like this. Love is a deliberate choice to willingly extend yourself above and beyond your pre-existing and existing comfort zones in order to nurture, foster, trigger the spiritual evolution, growth, and healing of yourself and by extension your loved ones and by extension from there it's like a layer cake but the thing is what i just said there as a definition if you need to listen to it again it's really really precise as precise as i could make it in this video and it does have results it has finite results you plan you make a decision to plant a seed of love and guess what happens yes it is work it is work, it is work, it's an investment, but look what happens. In the present, in the now, you might be coming sharply aware, much more aware than would have been apparent early this year or in the middle of last year, 2017, where you're actually starting to see tangible re results of your investment. All these pentacles add up. It's just like, oh my gosh, I thought terra illumination was insane, but no. This is actually kind of sense. It's a very weird, bizarre kind of science, but it makes sense. Love thyself. Invest in thyself. Make the most loving decision. And it works. So you build up a legacy. You, it's like building up a trust fund of love in terms of evidence of love, tangible evidence of love around you. Like, look at your relationships. Like, look at, focus on the good things that are happening in your relationships and the growth and the maturity and the evolution that's been happening with you over the last year and a half. That's very, very valuable. And there's still more to come, okay? This is actively in the flow right now. And it's obvious that you've been investing in it and working on it. So in some way or other, Aquarius, even though I might have hurt your feelings in some way, I'm not sure, 
but in some way you're doing a very, very good job of handling extremely challenging situations. So well done. So in your power, in the now, where you are consciously, vividly aware of your good fortune, your wealth, your values, your value, your abundance, especially in the relationship dynamic, self and other, other and self, how does this all translate? That's where you own your power, staying right there with the physical evidence, very, very close, okay? And making your decisions accordingly. How does that look? More pentacles, okay? So it is like learning, it's like learning a, through a process of physical reality, with more, with all these pentacles here, the seven of pentacles, part of the work, part of the process of what we're talking about here is number one, the commitment to the investment to love thyself, work, work, work. You don't have to work yourself to the bone, but every day doing something positive to invest in yourself, love thyself and with evidence of love. In other words, can you write it on a piece of paper? Not what you were feeling, but what did I do for myself today that was the most loving thing I could think of that I would not normally have done? What is that? Put that on a piece of paper and then add that up. And then the next day, and then the next day, and the next day, and it all adds up. And so what can happen is you can get to a point where you realize one of the ways to make all this work, a very fundamental part of the process of development, if you think of this almost like real estate development, you're developing the value and the value in yourself, is understanding what doesn't work, okay? Realizing that it isn't just all about missions and going forward. It's also about clearing up. Uh, anything, everything that is an obstacle, anything that has been neglected over the years, think of it as a 19 year cycle. You're still in the cleanup campaign. You know, think of those, um, you know, Aquarians, it's all about like nuclear energy and things like that, sort of like with Pluto and whatever, uh, especially with Jupiter and Scorpio right now. My feeling is that when you're making decisions, the first step is to evaluate the situation right now, whatever it is, look around you, evaluate your heart energy, ask yourself, what, in other words, like saying, what do you need now? Dear, dear heart center, what do you really need right now? Tell me in tangible terms. I am listening, okay? And the heart says, I need dot, 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 fill in the blanks. And you kind of go, ah, thank you for explaining that. Let me take care of that. And then the heart reminds you, it's just like, well, there's a lot of cleanup campaign to do as well, because the stuff that I need and want is already there. It's just that it's clouded over and grown over like a like an out of control garden, you know, or an out of control farm that was just left abandoned. And everything is outgrown, overgrown, uh, obsolete, redundant, rusted uh, to the point where it becomes an obstacle. So when you're making decisions going forward, first order of business is look for the obstructions, look for the obstacles, look for all the stuff that needs repair and maintenance, put the work and the investment in there, clean that up, then you've got a near, like a, a clean piece of real estate, farmland, your life, your world, and then start planting the seeds very, very carefully, reinvest and regrow, okay? So how do you do that? It's a lot of work, okay? Work, 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 invest, invest, time, time, time oriented, pentacles. Okay, with the Ten of Swords here, it's almost like, you know that, uh, what's that expression, putting a carrot in front of you? It's almost like, in order for this to work, it's almost like deliberately hanging, strapping something onto your head, and it dangles in front of you, and you start looking at it, and it's a reminder every day, all day, every day, I don't need this anymore. I mean, you don't want to dwell on the problems forever, but sometimes if you're up in the up in this up in this, you know, outer space, Aquarius, and you forget that there's a whole bunch of problems here on Earth in your life that need healing and need solving, a lot of it you might have just absorbed without even knowing it. Other people's messes, concepts, beliefs, and distorted information that's messing up your spiritual hard drive. Go forward. With, think of this as dangling in front of you, like you're walking through, living through your life, doopy 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 doo, and you have this thing dangling in front of you as a reminder. Oh my gosh, I don't need that anymore. That's not going to let that happen anymore. Damn, we have to get rid of that. This is going to help you identify 
all the weeds and everything that's neglected in here, all the issues of pain and suffering that are obsolete, redundant, have to go. Identify one, at least one per day. Get rid of it. Say enough is enough, enough. This is complete failure and ruin and obsolete. Remember, this, this, this happens by decision, by choice, okay? So this doesn't have to be this way anymore because this is the good stuff, okay? Consequently, okay, so at the emotional level, this could lead to a, a feeling that, wow, when you actually do this thing effectively, you can actually feel it as a sense of loss, as a sense of indolence, like, oh my gosh, I wish I'd known all this stuff before, because you might have had so much love invested in what you thought was your life, what you thought were the relationships, the people, the places, the ideals, the ideologies that you loved and valued and cherished, only to realize that it's all getting reformatted and it's obsolete, just like obsolete hardware, obsolete operating systems, obsolete computers and gadgets and toys, attitudes and beliefs. And then realizing in order to heal and move forward, it's, it's almost like you have to have a, like a ceremonial farewell, even if you're crying your eyes out as you walk away and head further and further and further on your own journey towards what actually works. So what happens if you neglect all this? What happens if you just, just keep going through life on autopilot and you're trying to fix all this by neglecting it or running away? And you're trying to deal with all this work by avoiding it? Okay, what happens then? Okay. To me, you get, it looks to me like you get lost, completely and utterly lost in a psychic, spiritual, emotional, self-delusional haze, okay, uh, where you think you're going in the right direction, uh, only to discover that you're going deeper and deeper into the unknown, literally like lost in space. Flip it around. Oh my gosh, look, look at that. <gasps> Same card again. Look, when you do it right, you discover some of the mysteries. In some ways, this is a very, very, almost like an occult secret mystery formula that it takes a lot of people lifetimes to understand. But this is your chance now in your lifetime as an Aquarian with these Aquarian Leo eclipses to understand the mystery and understand that it is a mystery and you hold the secrets. And it doesn't mean you have to like write a book about it or become some kind of Zen master or yogic ascended guru, whatever, you can just simply get on with being who you are, knowing that you've got access to this, like, it's almost like a secret formula. It's, oh my gosh, like, why didn't anybody tell me? Why didn't anybody tell me? Okay, but you know it. And you, you, so you become like a, a guru to yourself, okay? Which works very, very well, which could be the, the essence of Mars and Aquarius in effective action, in effective action, okay? Doing what actually works to the point where people don't get it. They think like, how on earth does Aquarius do what they do? How did you do that? How did you live through the last uh, 18 months with all these eclipses, Aquarius, and come out to be this, to be like this? How do you do that? Please tell us, okay? You might have gone through huge epic changes and what might feel like losses, friends, family, loved ones, in order to be this way which is in many ways a lot healthier. It's just that it's a it's a journey. What 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 about prospects? Okay, you see, it's all about writing a whole new code. By the time you come to the middle of September, my feeling, Aquarius, is that this reading will make a lot more sense. Because right now it's kind of epic, almost a little bit too much to digest in one reading. That's my feeling. Uh, so my my suggestion is to, you know, absorb this reinterpret it, sleep on it a little bit, try and re-understand uh, this in the simplest terms possible going forward. Just tell yourself that these eclipses are really going to shake things up. You're going to come out the other side more like a guru to yourself, and you're going to come out with a whole new operating system, a whole new vision of life ahead where you're going to have to completely rewrite your commandments to yourself, okay? First and foremost, the first commandment to yourself is love thyself. And then you can write the next batch of commandments from there on. But the first one has to be love thyself by decree. So it is spoken, so it is done. I am the Aquarian master of myself. And that's just how it's going to be from here onward. Thank you.
So I know that sounds kind of dominating and so on, but you know, Mars and Aquarius is going to be here for, still for months. So you might as well take full advantage of it. All right. Let's leave it at that. You can reinterpret. I know, I know this might have sounded like lunacy to some of you, but I hope it sinks in and makes sense with some of you. Okay. Um, there you go. I'll leave it like that. All the best. Thank you for coming to Terra Illumination. Bye-bye.